Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. And today's video um, was an interesting question I got on my Facebook page, uh, which is linked in the description below if you'd like to go over there. Um, you're more likely to get a hold of me on there than in the YouTube comments. But the question asked why American fast battleships chose to go with a flush deck versus the quote-unquote broken deck of the standard type battleships. So, uh, first off, the type of deck is a very important thing for the distinction of warships. Going all the way back to ancient Mediterranean ore-powered ram vessels, uh, there was a distinction between cataphract and aphract vessels. A cataphract trireme, for example, had a complete wooden deck over it, which protects the oarsmen from arrows coming down on them and provides a large flat surface for marines and artillery. While an aphract vessel does not have a completely covered deck, which means that you've got more ventilation and a smaller crew and then likely a faster ship. So, uh, during ancient Mediterranean wars, uh, you see a transition from the Greco-Persian wars where you tend to see a lot of Afract vessels to the Punic wars, which become more like land fighting at sea, uh, where you start to see the predominance of cataphract vessels. Going into the age of sails, the number of gun decks is vitally important for the type of ship you have, where a sloop of war has a single deck of guns. A frigate has a single gun deck and then carries guns on the spar deck. Ships of the line have two, three, even four decks of guns with the size and number of guns uh, determining how powerful they are as line of battle ships. Even going into the age of battleships, the number of decks is important. For example, British battleships always have one more deck in their hull than British battle cruisers. So British battle cruisers like HMS Hood are often wetter than their battleship equivalents. So the United States Navy specifically used the broken deck design pretty extensively during the Dreadnought era. And every single one of the quote unquote standard type battleships that the Navy liked features a broken deck. What do I mean by that? The main deck is this one down here. You'll notice that about two-thirds of the uh, way back, just at the end of the after superstructure, the deck comes up and the O1 level ends up up here. As opposed to on this Iowa-class battleship, both of these are 1700 scale models, so they're in the same scale, you notice that the main deck is one continuous flush deck all the way through. Uh, another place where this is impo an important distinction during this time period is with destroyers, with the four stack destroyers being broken up into the flush deckers of the Clemson and Wicks class at the end of the war, and the broken deckers or flivers as the earlier uh, destroyers that have a raised forecastle deck. So that's all important. What do you get from flush deck versus broken deck? A broken deck ship is going to save weight. By not having this main deck back here, your ship is lighter. It also means that your main battery guns can sit one deck lower, which also saves weight because the barbettes that they sit on are armored. Whereas a flush deck ship is not only going to be a drier ship, but it also has greater structural strength. So when you see a very high length to beam ratio like the Iowa class has, you need a uh, flush deck to be able to have enough strength in this hull without having to spend a ton of weight on extra framing and uh, other internal structures like that. If you look at uh, this picture of the Lexington class battle cruiser, she is technically a broken deck ship like all of the standard type uh, capital ships in the US Navy at that time. But notice at 860 feet at the waterline, same as an Iowa class battleship, they have to extend the main deck more than three quarters of the length of the ship to have enough structural strength to be that long 
on a 106 foot beam. Most World War II battleships end up being flush decked, in fact. Uh, the only major ones I can think of that are broken decked are the Italian Littorios. And you notice how they have that notch down there which allows for float planes and boats to be stored uh, very safe away from the blast of the after turret. So um, those are your main reasons for having a flush deck ship versus a broken deck ship. And that's why the US Navy um, ultimately chooses that with its modern fast battleships. It's important to note that even today you see a mix of flush deck and broken deck ships. So such as uh, the Arleigh Burke class destroyers or the Ticonderoga class cruisers would technically be broken deck because they have a lower, uh, on the Arleigh Burks, it's the flight deck for the helicopters that's one deck lower than the rest of the hull. Uh, on the Ticonderogas, it's um, the after deck where the five inch gun is, drops down a deck lower just to clear that out of the helicopter's route. Now this question made me think of what would an Iowa class battleship look like as a broken deck ship. So I uh, modified a ship bucket drawing, which uh, we're gonna put on screen here. Uh, and I should mention that this is a drawing originally by Paul 2020. Uh, I left his name on there. I didn't put mine on. I do not have the author's permission to make this update. So besides having it in this video to show you, we're not gonna publish this picture anywhere. Uh, but I modified his drawing in Microsoft Paint. This is a ship bucket scale drawing, which means that it is uh, drawn in Microsoft Paint at a scale of two pixels equals one foot, or one pixel equals six inches, however you want to do that. So uh, if you head over to shipbucket.com, there are a tremendous number of drawings uh, by artists like Paul2020 and others who uh, have illustrated a number of battleships, both real and unbuilt. And we often use ship bucket drawings in our videos when we're talking about them. And uh, for a while, back when I had free time before I had two jobs, uh, I was a contributing artist on ship buckets. So I've messed around with Microsoft Paint some on my own. Now, what I did here was extend the O1 deck as far forward as I could before it hit the forward swoop of an Iowa class's bow. It was interesting to me um, how high that bow swoops when you look at extending that line out. And I extended that line all the way back to the after end of the superstructure before you get to turret three. So about uh, two thirds of the ship's total length. I uh, depicted the ship in measure 22 camouflage, which means that uh, everything above the main deck is in that lighter gray color as opposed to the navy blue color of everything below. That's the camouflage scheme you see uh, depicted on this model right here. So that really points out to you uh, what was added on the deck. And uh, I think that it's barely recognizable what was done. Uh, two of the major problems with Iowa class battleships, especially from a British point of view, or with that long narrow bow, the bow would flex a lot in heavy weather. Well, by adding an extra deck up there, that adds more rigidity. So we might reduce that problem. And because of the high swoop of the bows of Iowa class battleships, which was necessary because of uh, how thin it was up there, how unbuoyant and how much water they would ship, the guns could not fire forward at low angles. The British intentionally left their main decks not only flush but flat on the King George V class battleships and many of their earlier battleship designs, uh, the Nelsons, Hood, go all the way back through Dreadnought, um, so that their main gun could fire dead ahead at nearly zero degrees elevation. Um, the Iowa class battleships can't do that. However, by bumping up the height of the main deck, I also had to bump up the height of the main turrets, which again, we're adding a lot of weight, both from this extra deck space and also from raising those barbettes. We also have to drop the 40 millimeter gun that would be on top of turret two, or else it would obscure the navigation bridge on the O4 level, which you can see in the picture. Now, for all of that extra weight, what have we added? One, in, in addition to the extra rigidity, 
we have added extra internal volume, which means you've got more buoyancy and more storage space inside the ship, more living space, uh, you name it, more internal volume is important. I am of the opinion that the reason the Iowa class battleships are retained in service the longest uh, isn't because of their high speed or even their uh, the fact that they were built last, it's because they have the largest internal volume of all of the American battleships. And so you can do the most with them. They've got the most room for change. That's also why I believe um, the U.S. Navy looked at retaining the North Carolinas longer than the South Dakotas, because even though the North Carolinas were inferior ships, they had more internal volume. The other major thing, because we have raised the turrets an extra level, that leaves an extra deck of storage space below the turrets, which may allow us to put more shells or powder down there, which would then allow us for deeper torpedo protection at the bows, which was a major problem on the Iowa-class battleships. Now, if we've got all these benefits, why didn't the Navy do it? Well, two reasons. They're designed with major limitations in mind, one being the naval treaties, the Washington and London Naval Treaties, which limit the displacement of these ships. So adding that extra steel is going to add extra weight. And two was the existing infrastructure. There's already a small number of dry docks in this country that can handle an Iowa-class battleship. Adding that extra weight and height might make the ships sit deeper in the water than their 38 feet, which may make it so that they can't fit over the sill of many of the dry docks that can take them, which is generally about 40 feet. So, uh, at the end of the day, it was easier and cheaper to just do away with that. What do you think? Which do you like better, the flush deck or the broken deck? Let us know in the comments section down below. Uh, I'm a big fan of the standard type battleships, but I think I prefer a flush deck ship at the end of the day. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. We really appreciate your support. There's a link in the description below if you'd like to continue supporting us. There's also a link in the description below to my Facebook page uh, where you can directly ask me questions, which then leads to videos such as this one. Another way you can support the museum is by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find out about us and our channel. Thanks for watching.